Hey everyone, and welcome back to another week with the HLP. For this week, I wanted to let you know that there is a Die Hard Dice sale for the winter. So if you would like to support us and get some discount dice, go ahead and use the code HIDEOUS at dieharddice.com and order yourself some brand new dice. That's all I have for this week. So with that, I'll welcome you into episode 227, Don't Near the Reaper. Liquor and things that go boo, then buckle up, listener, because this one's for you. Prepare yourself for the Hideous Laughter Podcast. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Hideous Laughter Podcast, episode 227. You guys, uh, guys ready to fight death? Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Oh, yeah. Less, Fight or join one lesser or the other. death. Come on, little guy. <laughs> little guy. <laughs> We're either fighting or joining death, so I'm fine. You know, like when the lesser version of a creature is like a CR 16, it's this, like an issue. Is this like when uh, there's like a really big muscular dude and people call him tiny for fun? Yeah, they call him lesser death, but he's yeah. actually the stronger mm, of the two yep. deaths. Hmm. Actually, a regular death is only a CR 10. Wow. <laughs> what a strange move. <laughs> strange move by the developer. Greater death? CR4. CR4 greater death. <laughs> <laughs> Works in opposite of the cure light wound system. Should have been light death. Mm. It's a uh, what? An odd life of Timothy Green situation. Mm. He's a little death light over here, but uh just have too many of them. <laughs> that's that's real killer. Well, Brooks, I see you uh, pounding something over there. What do you have? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm just finishing off part of Emily's drink, but I'll let her explain that. I have a Jose Cuervo Playa Mar that I'm really going to have. It's delicious. Nice. Steve, you got anything good over there? Yeah, I have a beer that our buddy Eric gifted me a little while ago that I haven't gotten to yet. This is a collaboration between Sly Fox Brewing Company. Hey, some call me a little bit of a Sly Fox sometimes. And uh, (laughs) Alternative 104.5, Philly's premier alternative rock station. This is an Alt Access Pineapple IPA. Is it... um... Is it like a traditional Sly Fox can? Uh, it doesn't look like it is. Sly Fox is one of the only breweries in the area that decided to change their canning system. Hmm. So they they run certain cans through like an alternative canning system mm-hmm. where the entire top comes off. Mm. When you um no when you pop the top. That's not this. Wouldn't want it for on air. Yeah, it's, it's like, very too cool. much. It's I mean, cool, it's but cool, yeah, sure. but yeah, it's like <laughs> they, they might not do it in uh, in Tall Boys. Now that I think about it, because that's mm. just a little unwieldy. But they even have like a special like <laughs> ring, so you don't get cut. Like there's a that's nice. Yeah, there's a um, it's like a pint glass. For, in a yeah, yeah, huh? It's pretty interesting. Cool. That's pretty slick. But yeah, I like Sly Fox. Pretty good. Ailey, you got anything good over there? I have a Gatorade and a water and a coffee. <laughs> I do have three drinks. Oh, Triple threat. Look at all GWC. GWC. Well, I'm uh, I'm right there with you in the non-alcoholic game, but uh, I did bring a thematic beverage. I'm drinking a Liquid Death, Bury It Alive, uh, mm. Berry Seltzer, and uh, Liquid Death, Lesser Death. What's the difference? It's pretty close. <laughs> yeah, it's a good it's a good time to be drinking a Liquid Death. Mm. Especially because I almost met my liquid death today. Mm. Gross, Griff. <laughs> I'm recovering from a little bit of a stomach bug. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, people on our Discord were talking to me about it today. So, yeah, Haley and I are in Ground Zero right now. Yeah, let's uh, let's hope I've stayed away from you as far as I can. So, uh, let's hope you're good. No sharing drinks. Mm-hmm. I know. I know you really want this liquid death. I know you're eyeing my sly fox. You're such a sly yeah. fox. Steve. Well, I was only <laughs> eyeing. People say that's what I'm I was only I eyeing it because it had a it had a pineapple on the can. And I was yeah. like, oh, is that a swinger beverage? Mm. Uh, unfortunately, I can't swing it on over to you today. Yeah, no, there's no swing involved in that beverage. <laughs> uh, Emily, 
You got uh, the Patreon drink, right? I do. Today, I have the recycling bin that was suggested by <laughs> Plus One Tray of Cold Resistance. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> this is... Looks like you weren't able to swing the poles. Mm. No, and it's especially sad. It's a very cherry-themed beverage, and I don't really like artificial <laughs> cherry. <laughs> <Ha>. <laughs> So this is cherry limeade Svedka vodka with cherry limeade. And then it is supposed to have a sour gummy energy drink mixed in. uh, But instead, I used a sour cherry uh, warhead soda. So that'll probably go even better. Yeah. Yeah. And say that sounds responsible considering it's what, 730 for you? At night. On a weeknight. Mm-hmm. I know. I need to go to sleep tonight. If if I was someone who liked cherry, this would taste okay. Uh-oh. I don't really like cherry, so it's just, eh. Eh. It sounds delicious. I, I was going to say, I like artificial cherry. I don't mm-hmm. like limeade a ton, but I'm hoping the artificial cherry would cross, like cancel all that out. Yeah. If you want to hear Minor Steve's thoughts on artificial cherry or black cherry or whatever, just listen to the now nearly 100 Zone of Truths. Truly any episode of the show. You just throw a dart at a board. <laughs> yeah. We're probably talking about it. We still have a roll off, I think. Who's who's up? Is it just you and me? I think so. Right. Oh, yeah. come on. 11. Oh, shit. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. Middle of the road. Come on, come on. Eight. Oh, oh no. Oh, we hand it back over. Boys. Folded in the oh. finals. Uh, it was a good run. Good was. season. Yeah, it was good a good season. season. <laughs> When's the last time Emily won? A while. It has been a long time. Have you had the chalice? I did, yeah. He, she had the chalice I think more she, than once. I think she yes. had it in that yeah. string where it was mostly Haley, but she got it once or something. Mm-hmm. It was like it was Haley the, and it was Emily. The boy lines, <laughs> we started getting frustrated. It was when the boy lines was <laughs> Yeah. It was when Boys Without Borders started. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> My. Uh, okay, well. Um, the yeah, many so, will overthrow the few. <laughs> the many will overthrow the few. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll get Steve that win eventually, but. Uh, Here's it's, hoping. It's leaving. The, the chalice is leaving the boys this time. So uh, without further ado, I think we should get into it. When last we left our heroes, they. Exited Ren Church back to the Nigul in order to rest and repair themselves from a, a particularly difficult battle with nearly all of the undead um, in the area. They left with the knowledge that if they want to get into the church, there is a lesser death waiting for them. Uh, that something that Eclipse found out on her reconnaissance around the church. And so... Realistically, last episode was a lot of buffing, a lot of buffing, a lot of talking about the kind of the stuff on the ship, but that's about it. You guys laid down some serious buffs. I think everybody's got uh, Death Ward on, among other fantastic buffs, that pretty much anything that you guys could throw on yourselves that lasted longer than rounds, you did. And so the last thing that happened was as you entered the, uh, once again, the courtyard surrounding Red Church, the lesser death was there to greet you out front of the cathedral, and it pointed at Eclipse with recognition, calling her the Collector. And I think now I need you guys to roll some initiative. All right. Here we go. Ooh. Oh, my God. This is some shit. I hear some laughter. I hear some... Disbelief. <laughs> why don't we? Why don't we start with Air Bear? I didn't hear anything from Brooks. Well, it's really not too bad because his initiative is so high already. It is going to come out to be twenty-four. Twenty-four, not too shabby. How about Uska? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. How about Eclipse? Six. Six. Ooh. Six oh. for good old Eclipse. How about Ickmer? 20. That's pretty good for Ick. Oh, Tulia. yeah. 14. Okay, so you're going low on this. I think it's going to be a tale of Brooks and Emily going and then <laughs> Steve and Haley going. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. How about the tombs? That'll be a 17. 17, okay. And Lyra? Please break up my characters, guys. 18. 
So far, I'm right. And Durin? You're definitely right. I natural wand my way up to an 11. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so it's gonna. Oh, perfect. It's gonna be Brooks Emily, Brooks Emily, Steve Haley, Steve Haley. <laughs> oh my and, god. Uh, from Minnesota to Columbus and back. Good to know that half the studio can just tune out <laughs> at any given time here. And so at the start of combat, the lesser death is going to move forward. Well, let's hope it doesn't have any sort of race. Uh, right where we want. Fireball would be bad. So he's going to hop up uh, 40 feet to be near all of you. He's about... Uh, Igmer is 15 feet from him. Eclipse is 20. And those of you that are within 20 feet of him... So that's going to be Erbear, Mitsumbe, Ikmer, and Eclipse... You start to feel like just this... It's a, it's a strange feeling, unluck, right? It, it it doesn't quite take hold at first, but maybe, like, your grip feels a little weird on your weapon as you hold it. Or maybe, like, your footing just doesn't feel as sure as it did before this creature approached. And once again, the creature just pointing at Eclipse casts a spell... Eclipse, you are within the aura, and so you have to roll twice and take the worst on a fortitude save. You have Death Ward on, correct? Yeah. You'll take a plus four to this as it is a death effect. So remember to take the lowest. Oh, they're the same. Oh. Oh. Yeah, they're the same. Anyway, it's also mind affecting. No, it's not. Necromancy, death. 29. I rolled threes. 29. Two threes on a roll twice and take the worst. Two threes. Okay, so you're going to take 32 points of damage untyped as you shake off the effects of a finger of death, Mm -hmm. which would have dealt 160 damage. Oh, well, I am so glad that fortitude is my best one. Yeah. Because if that was will or reflex, like, well, well, mm. and me. Yeah, you would have failed on any of your other... Anything but, yeah. but fortitude. Um, however, that is the creature's turn. Oh, I forgot to mention, it is... Because uh, it's kind of walked... You notice it kind of just steps off of this ledge that led up to kind of Renchurch mm-hmm. straight off. So okay. it's... Uh, it appears... You know, you're all high-level characters. It appears to be air walking. So it is actually 10 feet up. And it's Air Bear's turn. Putting away my character sheet for a while. <laughs> yeah, take a breather. You don't have any good reactions you might need to use? Oh, wait, I guess you can't use them I don't. until you've gone. <laughs> All right. So Death has floated toward uh, the large group of us and. Air Bear is going to face him and say, "That was quite well. We were prepared for for you here." <laughs> <laughs> Seems like you were. <laughs> and I would expect you to be as prepared for us. <laughs> and so then he Are activates his challenge. <laughs> What a mess, man. I knew you were challenging him because you just kept talking about all his good tactics. (laughs) (laughs) And so then Air Bear has a potion of fly he is going to pull out and drink. And so that is going to be his entire turn. Okay. Uska. Uska is going to have a pretty similar turn here. She uses her fly hex to gain flight herself. And then she flies over, uh, gets a little bit closer in on the group and flies up 15 feet and is going to end up kind of above the lopper. Okay. All right, Igmer's up next. All right. Well, since no one else has really stepped up to death yet, Igmer is going to bang his uh, sword on his shield and say, well, then let's go then. All right. And step 10 feet forward and try to attack. 
So he's 10 feet in the air. Oh. I am so... Still need a way to get up five feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I forgot about that part. <laughs> okay. Or get bigger. Oh. You could certainly delay if you don't have one of those capabilities. Does it your you. armor? Yep. So instead of uh, just walking forward, he will uh, command his armor to use its one use of fly per day and right. kind of f- uh, float forward and ahead. So he is equally at 10 feet. So I guess he would probably go like up first and then go- move forward. Yep. That makes sense to me. Ooh. So you, so you did that. You moved. Mm-hmm. And try to attack again. Not not a great start. 29. 29 doesn't do it. Yeah. While you were in this, this aura, you're also going to have to roll twice. That's right. The worst. Well, since I didn't hit on that one. Does not matter. Lyra. Lyra is going to take her chance while the party is all grouped up. She casts Blessing of Fervor on everyone. Nice. Yay. And where she's standing right now, she is not in the aura, and she's at the back of the party, so that's where she's going to stay. And since she doesn't move, there's a mist that surrounds her, giving her some concealment. Okay. Matumbe. I took this opportunity to go to Durin to turn on the... Uh, bl- uh, the blessing, fervor. yes. And I'm switched back. Okay. All right. So since this creature is up in the air, Mitsumbe cannot reach it. <sighs> what to do? I think I know what to do. <laughs> Mitsumbe is going to holster his book in its holster, of course. Um, and then he is going to reach down into his belt, pull off a little vial, shake it up a little bit, uncork it, slam it back, and time to become a nuisance because I just enlarged person. All right, let's make you big. So sheathing the book is a move action. Mixing and drinking the extract is a standard. He is then going to take a five foot step. I'm going to put you where um, where the empty spaces were. Perfect. So now if he's tall and has reach because of that, he would be technically th- uh, threatening this creature. Mm-hmm. However, I did have to uh, put my book away to make that maneuver possible, so I'll have to draw that on my next turn. But that's it. Can't you, uh, I mean, you can't attack, but can't you, oh no, you've, yeah, can't you draw it as part of a move? As as part of a five foot action, uh, like a five foot step though? Mm -hmm. I thought that was just part of a move, but if that is true, then yeah, he could just redraw it, that's fine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can do that. Don't at me. Tulia. Did Matuba acknowledge? I had tried it previously when I hadn't seen the creature. And oh, yeah, you can, you can make any knowledge okay. if you want. It's uh, religion. Great. Just want to make sure you're. we get everything out of you. Yeah, we'll <laughs> need it. Ooh, okay. Pretty good. A filthy, filthy <laughs> 50. <laughs> okay. Three questions. Special defenses. Special defenses... Uh, this creature is undead, obviously, so it is immune to ability drain, bleed, death affects disease, energy drain, exhausted fatigue, mind affecting, non-lethal paralysis, physical ability damage, poison, sleep, and stunning. It also has spell resistance. Hmm. That's it, though. I'd... No, um, no DR. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. I didn't hear incorporeal either. Is it not? It's not incorporeal. Huh. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay. That's really good. What else do you all want to know then? Special abilities. I I personally will want to know at some point the weakest save as a spellcaster. Okay, well we definitely can do that. We could probably do both of those, unless anybody has anything burning. So let's go weakest save, nice and easy. Weakest save is fortitude. Okay. Makes sense. No con score. And then how about that, their special abilities? Special abilities. The biggest one is this misfortune aura. So anyone within 20 feet of the creature will have to roll twice and take the lowest on any ability check, attack roll, caster level check, skill check, or saving throw. This is a little bit late, but then I would have had to roll that knowledge check twice, wouldn't I? Oh, yeah, I guess so. That's fine. Okay. Okay. It's got a 
status, sight, ability, so it can see like your exact emotions, your current health. Oh. Um, let's see. It's got an unnatural aura, so uh, if any of you had animals, they wouldn't willingly approach him. And then he's got some spell-like abilities. Okay. So he can call spirit. He can use finger of death. He's got constant uh, sea invisibility, haste, and air walk on. He can slay living three times per day and can plane shift. Okay, that was uh, that was pretty good, especially knowing he's got that sea invisibility. That's sometimes Durin's bread and butter, so that's really good info. Matumbe shouts it out to the to the uh, to the rest of the party. Honestly, didn't sound that bad. I can't remember anything that scares me that much. We got this in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> That's his turn then. Okay, now it is Tulia's turn. Okay, it's not like there's multiple creatures here or anything, but I am still going to cast a lightning arc because it's really good. And I will actually go ahead and use a point for my arcane focus to increase the DC. Um, that's kind of risky. I could increase damage, but I'm going to increase the DC. And I will need a reflex save. I will also need to roll the spell resistance. Yep, so roll against spell resistance. 34. Barely. <gasps> I rolled a 17. I thought I had that in the bag. Oh. <laughs> Fucked. Okay. I do need a reflex save, though. Sounds good. That is a 36. Okay. Now that I know this, I will not do that again. Uh, so you're going to take half of the damage. Mm-hmm. Let me just double check my... Oh. <laughs> That's not the right number. All right. So I rolled 46. You're going to take half of that. So 23 points of electricity damage. Okay, it doesn't seem like, as Matumbe would have told you, it doesn't seem like any of that is blocked at all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought you were to say, as Matumbe would like have went through. <laughs> <you're> <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I listened to that. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, yeah, so that's my spell cast. I do not believe I'm going to do much more than that, um, except maybe just take a, a little five footer back. Sounds good. Durin is up next. Great. Durin is going to also take a little bit of a five footer back, but in his case, it's his fly because he's floating over the crowd with these bat wings that have sprung um, from the folds in his distressed army jacket. We have yet to make an actual attack roll against this creature, so I'm not sure what its AC is. That usually is kind of how I plan out Durin's turn, if I can kind of beat in the AC because I can turn on and off, bullseye, bullseye shot, deadly aim go against touch with my bombs, go against regular with the with the arrow. I got a lot of options, but I don't know what to do. Um, so just to, to, to break in there, I have tried. Oh, it wasn't well, I wasn't 29. listening. <laughs> okay. In that case, he is going to take his five foot fly back. He is going to steady his shot with the plus one seeking orc horn bow and then he is going to attach an explosive bomb to it and try and hit this creature. Sounds good. All right. That is going to be a 39. 39 does hit the creature. Okay. So lots of stuff is going to happen because these are also holy weapon bombed uh, arrows that he's using. So first of all, I'm going to just do the regular damage from the orc horn bow give me 12 points of damage then i will do my bomb damage it's all gonna be fire 28 points of fire damage it because this was an explosive bomb is going to take 1d6 of persistent fire at the end of its turn until extinguished okay and then finally i need to do the holy bomb stuff so it's what 2d4 yep But there's a couple riders here. Let's do the 2d4 first. Seven points of damage. High off the 2d4. I'm going to need a reflex save. Uh, Is it higher than a 10? Yeah. Okay, then we're fine. Don't worry about that. (laughs) Just like 30 higher. Okay, so that is a success. Good. (laughs) But that's it. All right, I read through the rest of 
the holy weapon balm stuff. So this this arrow that has a bomb on the end of it flies like holy waters flying off the back of it. It hits, bursts into flames, and now there are flames licking up the uh, robes of this deathly creature. Now he's looking like Ghost Rider a little bit. All right. Last in the round is Eclipse. Yes. And Eclipse has 60 feet of movement because she's flying. I'm pretty sure it's 60 feet. Yep. Yes. I said that with a lot of confidence and then you wasn't did say sure. that with a smidge of confidence there. Just a touch. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. 60 feet. Perfect movement. All right. Neat, neat, neat. So then if I move around, I don't want to be in this range. And then here. Sure. And getting 10 feet up. Uh, yeah. I uh, Yeah. I should have plenty of movement. So now I'm flanking with Ikmer. And now I shall try to hit death. Uh, yeah. Remember to roll twice and take the worst. Mm-hmm. You're- 35. No. Okay. All right. And so that's Eclipse's turn. And then the next one is going to be the Lopper who only has 30 feet of movement. The lopper is going to do his ferocious mine um, as a swift action. And get big. And get big before he moves up there. And then he's going to try and headbutt death. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> You're moving like right here. Yes. Okay. It's it's supposed to be uh, big Matumbe next to big lopper who's next to little tiny Eclipse. <laughs> this is pretty good. Yeah. That guy kind of like this. <laughs> All right, so I know. Roll twice, take the worst. Yep. 34. Nope. Yeah. Okay. It is Death's turn, and the person he took an interest in moved right up to him. I'm scared for my life. So he's going to five foot step around Eclipse. He's going to turn on Power Attack and Furious Focus. Oh, I have those too. And he's going to full attack Eclipse. Cool. Hey, I can do that too. <laughs> hey, I got that. Ooh, one off of a crit. Um, it's 40. Yeah, that hits. Look, here, maybe we can make a deal. You can be soulless lesser death, and I will be the collector of lesser like uh, lesser death. But You're about to get that. collected. Uh, yeah, no, I know. That, that <laughs> I'm trying to make a deal. <laughs> That hits 36 damage, then a 35 to hit. Yeah. 39 damage. Okay. Oh, boy. How about a 32 to hit? Meat speeds. Misfortune and having to be above a 35 is very hard. Yeah, 38 damage. Just going to keep attacking with this scythe. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Same. All right, guys. Um, This is maybe it. Oh, no. Already. 39 damage. You can just tell me what your health's at, too, because death can see that. Negative 13. Negative 13. Does that mean you float to the ground? Yeah, of course. Okay. Well, no crits, but Eclipse is unconscious and now on the ground. Well, you consistently did over 30 damage. Oh, yeah, he's just got a stack. Almost 40 32. damage every time. Yeah. <laughs> with power attack on, baby. So, like, with, like, a two through a four, you can maybe miss uh, Ikmer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Igmer's going to be the harder to hit. Okay. Well, go ahead and change your height in there, Eclipse, and then uh, it's Air Bear's turn because he he He's already collected. took his five-foot step. Yep. Air Bear sees this and just goes into this kind of rage. Activating his boots of speed, he is going to get that sweet, sweet haste bonus on top of the Blessing of Fervor, fly up and over... I'm trying to go around him. Okay. If you're making an attack, I need you to roll twice. I am. And I've got that holy. Well, first holy on there. And the uh, splitter cell resistance. Yes, you do have splinter spell resistance. If you hit. Yes. And since he moved, he's just going to attack once. Oh, there's no way. I rolled a seven and a two. So. <laughs> nope. <Yeah. laughs> Did you get above 35? <laughs> Ah, uh, let me double check my math here. Two plus 24. <laughs> no. Um, I, I had forgotten I've been holding my D6. I did not want to interrupt Brooks, but death continues to burn. Okay, yeah, sure. 
three points of fire damage. Nice. Burn, Reaper, burn. All right. Well, that was, uh, that was fun. It's X turn. Or sorry, it's Uska's turn. I had, I had uh, moved before I said anything, and then I moved again. <laughs> <laughs> right on down that initiative track. Yeah, you don't want to be there when, uh, when death has a full attack. Well, I wasn't sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, from what we've been seeing, Lesser Death is 10 feet up in the air and has only been attacking enemies that are within five feet of him. So, presumably, like where Eclipse is at right now, on the ground, she would not be threatened by death. Presumably. Okay. He didn't ask anything about his attacks, unfortunately. <sighs> That is true. And I feel like a, he has a weird looking scythe, so maybe it does have some reach. I don't know. What if he had a chain scythe? That was like his, I his mean, range really attack. Good. just like sweeps it around. And he definitely would be Ghost Rider. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be legit. Yeah, currently on fire. <laughs> the scythe with the <laughs> chain attached to it. Because that's what that uh, like monk weapon is, isn't it? It's just yeah. like it's not a it's not a big scythe, but it's like a hand like sigh or whatever it is. Yeah, but it, yeah, but it's got the chain so you it's can whip it chain, around. Yeah. Really cool. This monk's or this uh, death is from Tianja, so his sight has a chain on it. <laughs> it's cool as hell. It's got range and trip. Yeah, range, trip, uh, times four crit. <laughs> well, definitely has a times four crit. That's how I was. That's what I was banking on getting. Hey, doesn't sound like you need it. Well, I could have moved on to somebody else. If I... <laughs> All right, Uska, going to move up. Or I guess fly five feet and that puts her just outside of her first or just outside of her first range increment but outside of the aura and as a swift action she uses her enemy's bane ability to gain bane gotta love it and then she is going to throw her star knife twice okay I'm so mad too because you guys you guys got that uh He's got the death ward on, so the two negative levels he does on every hit aren't going through. Ooh. I'm also really mad because I just realized I forgot something pretty big for the Labyrinth Eclipse. Oh, yeah? Oh, no, what? I didn't add the plus two from Bane. And I don't think I'm going to hit either with a 34 was my highest. Nope. Ugh, darn it. He's doing the little, like, sway dance around your star knives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, didn't even rip his cloak. Yeah, he's like, he's doing the, the grim dance from uh, the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy over here. <laughs> that was a great show. That was a great show. All right. That seems like Uska's full turn, right? That is her full turn. So, Ikmer, what's up? So, I- Ikmer watched his longtime friend fall to the ground. And, no, e- Eclipse. I should have found a way to be closer. Everybody, if you could get closer to me, you should. I can take take some of these hits. Uska, can you make sure Eclipse is okay? Clear up pipes up from the back of the party. I have something that can help her. Fantastic. So then he he turns back to death and looks as menacingly as possible and takes a five foot step up. And full attacks. All right. Let's see if you can hit death. Yeah, we'll see about that. Nope. Uh, 30. Nope. Ooh, double 12s. 34. Mm -mm. Okay. But you're right up on him now, and probably the best part about that is Eggmer can kind of do his defensive stuff Mm -hmm. if he's right by death. Lyra. Oh, I was not done. Are you going to take a bite? Yeah. I mean, I've also got death. two more attacks. Oh, okay. Keep them coming. Does a... Oh, it's a 30. Then there's no chance of this one hitting either, except for... You roll a double nat 20s, double baby. natural 20s. Oh, an 18 and a 15, though. Fantastic on a terrible roll. All right, now I have to bite. Needed two 20s on that one. Didn't get it. All right. Now it's Lear's turn. True to her word, Lyra moves up to Eclipse, and she's going to dance 
through both Matumbe and the Lopper Squares to get up a right behind Eclipse and a little further away from Lesser Death. So really hoping he can't reach her all the way out here. And she casts Heal on Eclipse. All right. Wow. What's that? 130 points of... That sure is. Nice. Well, thank you. And if you had any like adverse conditions, it clears up a lot of those as well. But I don't think you had any of those. Nah, I just went to the ground. <laughs> well, you're back up now. All right. It's, it's Matumbe time. Let's go, baby. Matumbe takes a five foot step over. He is now threatening the creature. There are enemies that are the same size as the, as the creature, yet slightly smaller than Matumbe, also threatening the creature, which with my teamwork feat means that we're technically flanking the creature. Nice. I got Bane on the book. I got power attack off. I'm ready and willing <laughs> to use my second chance feat. I'm going to swing at this thing two times. Okay. I am taking my doubles. Yep. You don't have to remind me. Didn't happen on the first one. One of them's a natural two. But you're doing second chance then. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, dear. I think I'm close. I don't think I'd do it. That would be a 33 flank goes to a 35, which has missed before. And you know what? I have a banked inspiration. That's a 37. Meets beat. <gasps> okay. God, I had to weasel my way so far into getting that hit. <laughs> Uh, he's good on the destruction thing. All right, that uh, was. I need to roll on channel too. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, you didn't the, channel. Okay. I should have, but these were opt- like it's so unlikely that I'm going to hit this thing. And we have this entire dungeon, and I only have like five of those, so I'm not going to use those quite yet. Now I am a little bigger than normal, so I'm going to be rolling two d8 for my base damage. But with power attack off, it's going to be a little weak. Twenty. Three points of damage, and then just a bonus 2d6 on this Bane I'll throw out there. Hey, eight more points of damage. Took a lot, but uh, I got a hit off. And I think that's about as good as I can do these days. It's <laughs> about all that's you fantastic. can hope for. Yeah, it's my turn. Nice. Tulia. I'm going to use my meta magic feet, and so I'm going to cast magic missile using higher casting level. Okay, so... You prepared the spell uh, with the meta magic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I wanted to call it out because I didn't prepare like a ton of them in that, but I did right, prepare right. them. And so now I'll cast magic missile. It does have spell resistance. Yep. Roll me some spell resistance. You're outside the aura, so it's. Thank goodness. Thirty-four. Same as you got last time. I did my math bad. That's thirty-five, but still, it's fine. Uh, all right. And so then it's going to be 5d4. And then the meta magic is the top lane spell. Yep. They can still fall with their walk, right? Mm. If not, then I will just use one of my regular magic missiles. Hmm. I don't, I don't see anything to the contrary. Neat. So it's 23 points of force damage. And then because you were damaged by something with a force effect in it, that's why the top lane spell goes off. Or like the top lane spell thing works with it. And now I will be trying to make a caster level plus casting ability type of bonus plus any other bonuses that I have to that. So it's like kind of, it's like an altered CMB that I have to do. Mm -hmm. So I will be doing that. 25. No. And say it can't be helped when you roll another three. (laughs) You almost hit my CMB. That's been my favorite number lately, apparently, is three. (laughs) Oh. All right. Well, that's Tulia's turn. She's going to make a five foot step that way. A diagonal up. Okay. Durin. All right. Durin's going to basically do the exact same thing he did last time. So a five foot uh, step with, a, you know, with his wings flapping around to reposition. He is going to steady his shot with the orc horn bow, sling a bomb onto that uh, arrow that is got holy uh, water or the holy water bomb. You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he is going to go ahead and try and shoot at this creature. It was not a gimme, but that's a 38. All right. Which should hit. All right. Let's do some weapon damage first. Certainly lower this time. That's nine points of piercing from the bow. 
the explosive bomb detonates. It like sticks in him for a second and then explodes for 32 points of fire damage. Nice. Then because this was that holy weapon. Ooh, max damage on that. Eight points of damage. Reflex save to see if he takes some persistent damage from that. It's just a 10, so I think you're yeah. not fishing for a one. No one. And then I already had that persistent fire effect on there, so no, nothing changes with that, but just at the end of your turn, unless you take your full round action to get rid of it, I'm going to be rolling that D6 again. Mm-hmm. But All right, cool. That's that hit. We know he's going to spend that whole round. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... Eclipse, you are prone... Without your weapon. My weapon is behind Ikmer. I rolled a d12. It's behind Ikmer. Good stuff. Ooh. I will use Blessing of Fervor to swift action stand up without provoking, mm-hmm. which I don't know if it can reach me, but that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to have to try and move and hope for the best. So I am going to move behind Ikmer so that I buy my axe. Yeah, he's 10 feet up. He doesn't swing. Well, I didn't know. I would rather be cautious. Mm -hmm. And I know we have Blessing of Fervor, but in order to get even more benefits, like we can now take the permanent like plus two and stuff, and we can always use the swift action without having to worry. I am going to cast haste on everybody, but Tuli and Durin. They're too far. So that's awesome. That's about it for Eclipse. The Lopper, on the other hand, is going to take a five foot step up towards death and is going to... Try to slam, and this time I will remember Bane. All right, roll twice. Only a 31. I didn't roll so great. And that's uh, everything he can do. Okay, it is Death's turn. Let's see. He's going to take a diagonal up and then basically move around. So Air Bear, Ikmer, and uh, the Lopper will get AOs. Okay. Um, Okay. Matumbe was threatening him. I guess he would get one. Sweet. Okay. Mm. Air Bear has a 38. Nope. Uh, I had a big shit-eating grin on my face because I got a 37, but it sounds like you got some sort of dodge or something against AOOs. Dang. Wow. 42! (laughs) Nice. Don't you dare! Don't you dare! No, 42 doesn't. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say, Dodge gives you like a plus three. What does hey, he got? Hey, listeners, Griffin was shaking his head no at me. <laughs> you, don't get, really you don't get vital strike, though. That only works for your one attack. Right. And it can miss. All right. That is 38 points of magical bane damage. Okay. I need Durin to make me a fortitude save. Oh, he's like right there. Yep. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's not okay. I didn't see that he went by my other spellcaster. She is squishy. Yeah, so there's a Swifty. He's casting a spell on you. And as a Standy, nice. he's going to go ahead and attack at Tulia. Oh, boy. Oh, Tulia right. is going oh, down. That's so, oh. is this an enchantment, a sleep effect, or a death effect? It's a death effect, so take your plus four. All right. I mean,. Knowing. Roll twice, take the worst. Oh, yeah, that's right, because this guy's got me up close now. Fuck. Well, on one of them, I got a natural two, which you would normally think is would be my lowest. Oh, no. <laughs> but I also got a natural one. <laughs> oh, um, no. So, oh, no. So the finger of death deals 160 damage to Dorian. Oh, Jesus. Um, probably reducing him to nothing. Well beyond dead. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're um, dead, dead? I had uh, 128 health total. I had 14 con. So, uh, yeah, that would do it. Okay, so Durin falls lifeless to the ground, and then this attack is coming at Tulia. Fuck. Is Tulia floating? Not yet. Uh, power attack and Furious Focus are on for this. 36. Beat it by 10. Oh, well, that was a four on the die. Oh, boy. So you're just not looking for ones. Yep. Uh, so that's going to be 38 points of damage for Talia. It's now Air Bear's turn. No, it's fucking not. He takes three points of fire damage. <laughs> <laughs> I may be dead, but I can be petty. <laughs> that's 
just a great like saying right there. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was great. I was about to say, if both of our characters die right here, I guess it's time for Rune and Quinley to come back. Wouldn't be a bad opportunity. <laughs> All right, this guy really scooted away. Your bear yeah. did not like that. With that haste, he got that constant on haste. He got that 90 foot fly. Yeah, that's quick. So Air Bear is going to fly down, attack from five feet above the ground. Okay. Yeah, he would like to move into Death's Square one of these times, which I think would be so cool. Moving under Death's Rose. <laughs> <laughs> What's under there? I mean, it's, it's bones. Wake up in the boneyard. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Peek under Death's Rose. I'm seeing you. You're seeing a boneyard for sure. <laughs> well, you're certainly seeing a spiral. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Kind of like a duck. Christ. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, he can just attack one time, but this is with the splinter cell. Splinter s- spell resistance. Yes. No, so. He's thinking, he's thinking no. of the game, Splinter Cell. Got, Tam, got Tom Clancy on the brain again. Got Tom Clancy. He's, he's Clancy in it. My, yeah. No I, I have no Clancy. excuses for that one. <laughs> Double agent over here. With the, uh, 12 on the die. Did you do your roll twice? I did. I got a 19. Ooh, I'm saving myself from these, from these air bear crits. Yeah. Let's see. So that brings it up to... A, 36. Does Tully have a weapon out? Oh, no, you're not. Never mind. I was looking at Durin. Not uh, not death. It's hard to distinguish the dead and the dead. Mm. Yeah, 36 doesn't do it. You you miss it by one. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else. I'm not flanking. So this is a this is an interesting question. I want to pose it to the group, and maybe we maybe we look as as we're on the eve of Uska's turn. So you went down 160, which would put you at negative a decent amount right yeah it's like a negative 32 or something it's really low yeah so what i'm wondering is yes finger of death is a necromancy death spell but it just does damage it doesn't do anything like there's nothing in the text of it that's like and the body disappears after the yeah because like a disintegration or something actually says that right yeah yeah so I'm just curious, like, hey, if you're not, at, like, if you're negative 30, right, could a breath of life theoretically bring you back? Because normally a breath of life doesn't work on death effect stuff, but because it's death due to damage from a death effect spell. I would say that it would be damage if it if it specifies yeah, that's damage what, that's what I'm like trying that. To... So in breath of life, though, it does specify creatures slain by death effects cannot be saved by breath of life. So, right. And normally, Emily, I would completely agree with that because normally, like something like a power word kill just kills you. Mm-hmm. Something like a, you know, phantasmal killer just kills you. But finger of death specifically deals damage, just like slay living specifically deals damage. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, there's like there's like a whole thread on uh, breath of life versus uh, HP based death effects. Oh, yeah. So what I'm seeing is that had it brought Durin to like negative twelve, you could still use breath of life because he's not slain. But because he's slain and it is a death effect spell, regardless of the fact that it killed him with HP or just insta killed him, uh, it breath of life wouldn't be able to be used to bring it back uh, yeah that sucks it sucks I was just I was mulling it over because I kind of thought huh a lot of death effects don't do damage right now and that that makes total sense and I appreciate us checking but unfortunately it doesn't look to be the case oh well it is Uska's turn I was checking all of my abilities that essentially bring bring someone back from death at least like in combat. And unfortunately mm-hmm. they all specify that they don't work with death effects. Yeah, most of the most of the yeah. quick ones don't work well with death effects. It might have to wait, which is unfortunate because if I can get out of this fucking misfortune thing, like 
I can actually do damage to this creature, unlike many people on this board. But, oh well. It is what it is. He's down. Oh. This is such a bummer, but I think Uska's best course of action is try to keep people up as best as she can, and she knows that Ikmer has some pretty good armor, so he might be the only person that could actually realistically benefit from this. So Uska flies over to Ikmer, and she's a little bit higher than he is in the air flying, and she bends down and says, to comply at this game, and gives him protective luck. So now nice. Death's gonna have to roll twice. <laughs> <laughs> And what is it? Air, Air Bear, has he taken any damage yet? Not that I know of. Okay. I have to flip back to that sheet. I didn't think so, but I was just checking for their lifelink. Correct. He has not taken any damage. Okay. Uh, that's Uska's turn then. Igmar. All right. So now with protective luck, that, that more or less cancels out his misfortune. No. Okay. No, so basically it gives me misfortune against you and you misfortune against me. (laughs) I wish. Oh, I understand. I understand now. Yep. Everyone's rolling a lot of dice. Mm Mm-hmm. We're in a good old-fashioned luck standoff. Mm Mm-hmm. I guess, yeah, he can get... You are hasted. Yeah. So Ikmer is going to fly all the way up to... Man, I'm I'm trying to debate whether or not I want him... Or... whether or not he would want to block the way for large Matumbe and Lopper because that's... Oh, yeah, because they can get up behind the, and still hit. Hmm. But I would end up provoking. Yeah, not, I mean, you have protective luck. I guess, yeah, that's that's true. So then with that, Ikmer is going to more or less fly up ab- above death first and then come back down to end up okay. just five feet or five feet from death ten still ten feet five feet down okay so I guess where I'm coming from is would that provoke I guess that still would yeah so what I think you could do you were ten feet up already so if you if you stayed at 15 feet and then moved into the 10 feet up slot right where you are, he wouldn't have been able to hit you at 15 feet. And then you're just stepping into a threatened square here. Yep. If you're 10 feet up. So he wouldn't have been able to AOO you if you do it that way, but you have to be 10 feet up. Yep. So then that's what he'll do. And then just try to hit once. Okay. Oof. Five is the worst. So that's definitely not going to happen. Yeah, that's nothing doing there. Lyra. Lyra starts singing, so everyone can mark that on their sheets. Then she takes a five-foot step diagonally down, getting her next to the lopper and in line with Tulia. And then she uses a Cure Light Wounds mass. And nice. she can reach Tulia here, which is good. 17 points of healing. All right. And that's for everyone. So if anyone else is down. Matumbe. All right. Matumbe is going to take a step up. It's not close enough to be threatening this creature. So he has to make this a full action to move, meaning that he can only strike once at this creature with the book, kind of threading the needle between Tulia and Air Bear on the ground and over the, like, crumpled body of Durin who's like laying on the ground splayed out the the wings that had been spreading behind him and kind of filling this whole area this little like alleyway we're kind of in now just like lifeless and crumpled around his body he's not breathing it's very clear that he's not coming back up so Tumbe takes a swing with this book see how we do I mean, fuck. I mean, I got a, a fantastic to hit right now. It's, well, let's see here. Let's see how far away I am. And then <laughs> we can decide. <laughs> 33. All right. I'm, I'm out of 33. I will throw an inspiration on there. I got a 50-50 shot to actually hit this creature. 
four on the die. That is a 37. Go. Let's go. Fucker. All right, roll that, um, roll that will save to see if you get destroyed. I'm good. All right, again, literally to hit, I have never turned on power attack or the Durin equivalent. Deadly aim this entire combat. Just not happening. Yeah, it's just so. <laughs> it's impossible when you have to roll twice. Exactly. You see this high. So, okay, not terrible off the regular damage. That is going to be 35 points of damage total. Should all bust through, and that's it. All right. Tulia, you were right by death. Yes, I am. I am going to take a five foot step back into this building. Death steps up. Oh. That felt uh. very rude. I didn't have a caster by me yet. That felt very rude of you to do. Mm-hmm. And then the, uh, well, I'm going to cast defensively, and I have to roll twice on this. Yep. But I'm going to use greater power, greater expense, or whatever, and which means I can actually roll twice and take the better. Okay, so roll once. I have to roll the cast defensively. Yes. Yes. I just have to not roll a one. And I did not roll a one. That's good. And now I'm going to roll. I'm going to use my orb of chaos. Not used for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I am going to see uh, as this is a polymorph spell. So I can roll a d6 minus two uh, to increase my castle level. I'm also going to use a point of it, arcane influence to increase my castle level. Okay. Okay. So this is effectively cast at level level 18. And I, that's important to note. I am going to be going into my sonic form. Oh, that's cool. I've got plans. So now I am incorporeal. I do. I do have mirror image on, and I forgot it last round because I was dumb. Uh, so that is Tulia's turn. Okay, Eclipse. Nice. Yeah, Eclipse. We haven't picked your weapon up yet. I guess, do we feel it would be worth it for me to try to do a touch attack. I don't know if that's going to be more difficult. If it has spell resistance. Uh, that, yeah. That's what yeah, I was yeah, thinking yeah. with all of my positive energy right. spells. Mm-hmm. I was like, I have a cure serious. Yep. I'm trying to get off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm starting to consider using a channel just because there's no spell resistance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hopefully there's no channel resistance. I didn't hear <laughs> channel <laughs> resistance, but I could have missed it. Sorry. There is oh. channel resistance. Mm. Literally every undead. Yeah. It just I... assume channel resistance exists okay. Okay. on everything in book six. <laughs> yeah. All right. At some level. <laughs> Even being a regular zombie in here would give you channel resistance because of all the effects mm, going on. In okay. The, but he's got his own innate channel resistance as well. All right. Well, since that doesn't sound super worth it, I will uh, pick up my weapon. And maybe go die again. So I, I don't have a lot of other ways to go about this. I am a little worried that the lopper is going to not be able to get in here, really. Yeah, pretty much. One of your big guys can get in. You could maybe squeeze. If you got in the other side, somehow. You'd both be squeezing at that point if you if you both go in. So you'd both take the minus four penalty to all attacks. Or the thick kings filling up this whole little hallway <laughs> Matumbe and the lopper butt to butt squeezing in there <laughs> but, <laughs> pushing back and forth forever and remember he is slimy oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah at this uh, point Matumbe is it's too it's like he's they're slimy. greased up <laughs> <laughs> that's how they squeeze I, sweat, hey, <laughs> I know he's slimy I've had him in me oh <laughs> <laughs> alright is there anyone super hurt then cause I could pick up my weapon and at least heal up someone to uh before I get into this, but I just want to double check before I get into it, so. No. No, I feel like in this combat, people are either dead or they're not. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I figured. All right, neat, neat, neat. Yeah, we're playing dead or alive right now. <laughs> okay, since that's all I can do, I will uh, pick up my weapon and I guess cast stone skin on myself because at this point, if I just move up there, I'm not gonna. Oh yeah, you'll at least take some. Uh... Like if I, if I don't, I don't know. There's not much I can do there. Mm-hmm. So that is what it is, uh, and it has happened. And now I have my weapon back, and I have stone skin, and there's that. So now the lopper, and the lopper can either do butt to butt with Matumbe, but the problem is that it does do a minus four to hit, and boy, yeah. we need every bit of yeah, hit that true. we can do. That's tall order. Can the lopper get unbig? 
I mean, yes, but that uses all of it for the day. Yeah, so you can, like, move through your friends and get down here. Mm-hmm. It's just, it, you're definitely going to take an AOL. All right, fuck it, I'm doing it. Yeah. Attack me. All right, it's uh, 44. That uh, obviously fucking hits. I have, I am basically a naked man with uh, cloths wrapped around me. <laughs> that I just headbutt people. And he's slimy. It's going to be uh, 36 mm-hmm. damage. Does the Lopper want to make an attack? Yes. That was a f- one full move. Yep. And now I will be taking a vital strike attack action. Okay. And roll I have twice. to roll twice. 35. Nope. I know. I oh, know. Okay, it's Death's turn. Death is, uh, you, know, you guys have kind of now surrounded both entrances of this corridor that Death is in. And that must be kind of freaky, like, standing in a corridor, like, blocking both exits for Death. Truthfully, like, yeah. Most, like, people, we don't, most people would let Death walk out their door. We don't have it fully blocked off, but you have, like, Kaiju Matumbe on one end and like Pacific Rim mech like Lopper on the other like two big titans closing this thing off. Mm -hmm. As a swift, there's no AOO. So Tulia is in sonic form, which makes her incorporeal. Yes. The thing about incorporeal is that when a spell is cast on an incorporeal creature, it has a 50-50 shot of affecting them. So as I use this final finger of death, there's a 50-50 shot on whether Tulia will will have to make a save because the spell has effectively targeted her. Um, So I'm going to roll that now. 51 or higher, it will go off. Okay. 71. I need a fortitude save. I will use great power, greater expense. Okay, if you're going to use that, then you'll only have to roll once because you would have had to roll twice. Uh, and then it's you get a plus four because it's a death effect. Okay. I think I'm going to be okay because that's a 31. Okay. Okay. Oh, but then I'm taking damage, right? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this isn't, is, is this is, it doesn't require an attack roll at all? No, it's a spell. Well, there are melee touch attack spells. Range close. Okay. 28 points of damage as you successfully shake off the <sighs> the finger of death. Uh, and then it is going to four round attack the Phrasman here. Good night. Uh, now I will say he has a five foot step at any point in here. So I may choose to use it because he's constantly got status on you guys. And if this matters at all for anyone in the future, I do constantly have a weapon now. Just FYI. As Sonic, you yeah. have a weapon now? Okay. All right, that's a 42 to hit. Yep. 38 points of damage. Oof, a uh, uh, higher. Almost a crit, but not a crit. So it's going to be another 37 damage. All right. It's going to keep going here. That will miss you, I think, because um, there's only a four on the die. It's his third attack, so. I mean, your, your bonus is pretty high. You might want to check it, man. I mean, a you know 28. I don't no, think no, it's not. Yeah. Okay. He's going to keep going. Miss with a two on the die. Wow, okay. And then, cool. Uh, buddy. Right. So he has critical focus. Wait a, um, this will be a Wait critical. a second, though, because Uska... Can divine interference? I oh, actually, let me check. Am I thirty? Is he thirty feet away from me? No, he's thirty-five. Ah, oh, I'm so sorry. So, so this is good. you know, I'm at I'm at my lowest thing. I am getting a bonus because of his critical focus, right? So he's going to get a plus four to this roll. Yes, yeah, he's fine. still got to hit you. Oh, I think he might. Um, uh, maybe not. 34? Yeah. Okay. So, first of all... I mean, I, I got 72 health. Like, if you're doing yeah. high 30s yeah, for one, and we're gonna... doing times four, let's just 
Let's just call a spade a spade and say that I'm permit dead. I think this is going to kill kill you, but it's by damage, so we're going to want to know. Yeah. Yes, please track it. So the weapon damage. If one breath of life fails, can you do another one? Is that a possibility? Just a hypothetical oh. situation? In the same round, you could. Yeah. Julia uh, uh, could maybe do that, actually. I don't know if they would okay. stack. Like, no, it's just no, it's no, healing. Two it's separate. Healing. Oh. Yeah. So it's healing, so it would still, you know, if he's negative 80, it, it would still, like, heal him 45, so it'd be negative 35. Oh. And then if another breath of life hit him, you know. I have... So it has the potential, you just have to do a bunch in the same round. I have two characters uh, that can case, cast Breath of Life. Yeah, so... Ooh, got a third. Case, <laughs> um, 136 damage. <laughs> the X4 crit. Right. So, yeah, I'm at a cool negative 64 as Matumbe topples to the ground. Boom. And you just, you watched as death just, like, snarled in the face of, like, the Phrasman spiral and Matumbe just, like, an av- almost an avatar of the goddess of death. And it just, you know, cut into his breastplate cut across one of his legs and then finally this last one like nicks an artery across Matumbe's neck and you just see like he's huge so this huge gout of blood or he's large at least so this huge gout of blood like covers the far wall it would have covered Tulia but she's sonic so it just like sprays into that room and Matumbe slumps against the back wall but that, that may not be it for the tombs if the party can bring him back. Air Bear. I can't stress this enough. Fucking no, it's not. Because he's got three more points of fire oh, damage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep rolling those threes, man. It's more damage than half the fucking party's putting out. <laughs> so it is Air Bear's turn. All right. Yes. And Air Bear and Ikmar are standing very, pretty close together and see Matumbe fall and call out together I can't I can't do both of the voices at the same time I, I'm sorry both guys voices at the same time. <laughs> but uh, the, hey, may, maybe one of them has a slower reaction time then <laughs> no my second best friend in the world <laughs> <laughs> and they both said that at the same time Air Bear also he, he would follow that up with you have killed too many of my friends here it is time for you to die. All right. Remember to account for flanking because you are flanking now because Tulia technically has a yes. weapon. And, I, and I've uh, taken a power attack now. It's right. Well. right that's, yeah. what it, that's what it means when it says I can do a melee touch attack every round, right? Yes. You, okay. you are a, make- effectively equipped with a weapon. Like, a you know, whether it's a claw or a gusty sound burst. <laughs> <laughs> You're tickling somebody with a bass boost. <laughs> Get that 808 feeling. That brown note. Oh, yeah, I forgot. But Tumbe also shits his pants. <laughs> yeah, sure. Fucking whatever. <laughs> shit. Yeah, and he's fucking large, so it's like a. It's a big old it's like a steamer. It says of a rhinoceros. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead, Brooks. All right. Well, my lowest on the die is a thirty-five, or is a five. Thirty-five <laughs> is a five, but oh, okay. it is a thirty-eight to hit. Thirty-eight does hit. Fantastic. Oh man. This one is thirty-five damage, but that is with his first, uh, first blade. So, Brooks Air Bear sees. His new companion Durian drop, he sees Matumbe just get his artery sliced and slumped back, and he steps up. How does how does Air Bear kill death? <gasps> oh my oh, god. god. Right. I don't know if I could do it justice. <laughs> Doesn't matter, you have to. You this is you right now. What does he do? Air Bear finds both of his Wakazashis in between death's ribs crossed and then pulls them apart and shatters his rib cage from within and 
the rest of him just falls to the ground and cloak over these now just pile of bones. All right. Well, there's something we need to resolve. Yes. <gasps> yes. Yes. We do it. So we have Uska, we have Lyra, and apparently Tulia. I only have limited wish. Okay. So lucky for you, Uska and Lyra are first. Yeah, correct. In the order. <laughs> that way, it's not a level seven spell, but. So first up is Uska. So she flies down to Matumbe. I can't lose you too. And she will, as she's saying that, she exhales butterflies down onto him. That's 21 points of healing. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not. That's yeah, that's fun. low. 31 points of healing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was like, wait okay. a minute. That is it's way like You have low. a guaranteed 13. Yeah. Okay. So you All need right. to get. I'm at, I'm at negative 33. All right. So Lyra then sees Uska's effort, <laughs> uh, presuming that Ikmer, I guess Ikmer goes in between them if there's anything he wanted to do. Um, no. I will say the only thing that can heal like these negative hit points right now is Breath of Life, breath okay. of life because it's, it's specified in Breath of Life that it can heal negative beyond your like negative con. But Ikmer can certainly, you know... I'm just saying, don't waste a potion on it, Brooks. Ikmer just runs up to to his old body and tries to take his giant head in his in his arms. Aww. Lyra joins him as she runs up, standing right next to Uska, and she uh, reaches out to him, saying, "It's not your time." And she also casts Breath of Life. Now, does this just need to? get me at where I'm below con, or does this actually have to bring me up above zero? It does zero? not have to be above zero. The negative just okay. has to be less than your con. I feel a lot better about that then. Yeah. Yeah, so she's going to be close just on the, on the plus 13. Oh yeah, because it's plus 13 flat. Because that'll get you to, what, negative uh, 20. And then I have a con of 16, so it doesn't have to be high off the dice then. Well, then in the minimum, because it's 5d8, so. Yeah. yeah. Oh. We yeah. 32. You're up! Wow, 30 you're really wow. All right. Neat. Oh, fantastic. And uh, Tulia's obviously not going to do anything now. I'm just going through the quick turns, right? Because uh, you guys both went the other two healers. Uh, Tulia's not going to do anything. She's in sonic form. She doesn't have healing. She only has, uh, you know, other stuff. But Eclipse has a lot of healing. So Eclipse would run over ASAP to help Matumbe. And cure serious on you. And it's 3d8 plus both. Yay! Wow. 19 plus 12. I rolled a 5, 6, and 8. I'm like, 31. Right. Wow, you guys are pretty consistent. Like yeah. 31, yeah. 32, 31. Yeah. Right. Tumbe sputters to life. He's lying on his back, still large, surrounded by small and medium creatures, Gull- uh, Gulliver's Travel style. Um, as all these little creatures are around him. Oh, I saw it. I saw the spiral. She beckoned me. It was my time. Or was it? It's so confusing. Matumbe, you notice this heat on your arm. Like, Uska and Lyra came up kind of together on, on one side of you, on like your left side, and both like pump the, these breath of life into your left arm mm-hmm. and the heat's coming from like right where they touched and you normally have tattoos all over you yeah but where your party members had touched you the tattoos changed okay. and as you raise your arm you can read it quite clearly not this year not yet. Ah. <laughs> oh, man. That's pretty cool. I need you to finish your drinks because we'll see you next <laughs> oh. week. Oh. I and the corpse it. burns for five more points. <laughs> <of the fire laughs> <day>. <laughs> Laughter Productions is an officially licensed partner of Paizo Incorporated. 
Carrying Crown is copyright 2011. Carrying Crown and the Pathfinder Adventure Path are trademarks of Paizo. Paizo, Pathfinder, their respective logos, and all Paizo titles, characters, and artwork are properties of Paizo, Inc. and used with permission.